Hi, welcome to this presentation on Evo Trees for flexible gradient boosting trees. I'm Jeremy, and uh, working on Evo Trees was a first uh, serious uh, endeavor in Julia, and I was curious to see for myself how does the Julia language hold its promises of offering high performance code in a user friendly experience. So I was, uh, I will share with you uh, my experience uh, along that route. Why doing a Julia implementation? There are already several major frameworks for gradient boosting trees like XGBoost, LightGBM, and CatBoost. They are all C++ libraries with wrappers for various languages. With EvoTrees, it's a 100% Julia implementation with a very lightweight code base. There is also another Julia implementation for gradient boosted trees, GLBoost. A difference with uh, EvoTrees is that uh, GLBoost is uh, using the exact uh, method, whereas EvoTrees uses the histogram method. On the table on the bottom of the screen, you can see that EvoTrees perform fairly well compared with the XGBoost histogram method, which is the most efficient when dealing with large datasets. What is a gradient boosted trees? It's an algorithm that performs regression tasks by stacking binary regression trees. You can see that each of the tree that is added tries to capture the residual effect that has not been captured by all of the previous trees. With that in mind, we can see that defining a structure for a gradient boosted tree can be as simple as having a vector of trees. To that, we add the parameters that were used for training the model and the metric that was tracking the performance on our out of sample dataset. How to define a tree structure? A recursive structure can be intuitive. However, that was not the path taken by EvoTrees. Rather, we're using a simple vector of tree nodes. The hierarchical structure of the trees is taken into account by having indexes for pointing to the position of the dependencies. For example, if we take the root node on the top of the figure on the right, the left child would be, would be index 2 and the right child would have the index 3. As well, we have a split indicator uh, to identify whether the node acts as a split or a decision node or a leaf node, which is a terminal node that carries the prediction to be applied with uh, the, the decision path. How to build a tree efficiently? Parallelization is an obvious choice for speeding things up, but we cannot uh, apply this everywhere in the algorithm. Unlike uh, random forests, for example, we cannot build our trees uh, simultaneously. So the choice that has been made here is to parallelize uh, the selection of the best variable on which to uh, apply the split. Effectively, the model acts in a one-way fashion. So while the actual data can be two-dimensional, the, the algorithm look in sequence for throughout each of the individual variable to figure out what is the best split point on that given variable. So using the convenient threads macro makes that uh, parallelization quite easy. Another important performance aspect is the usage of the histogram method. The idea is to binarize the features. By doing that, the number of evaluation points is limited to the number of bins uh, set in the upper parameter. Also, uh, this avoids uh, resorting to sort for, uh, for the, on the observations, which is a costly operation. And also, we uh, can also apply the um, histogram subtraction trick. Uh, this result in avoiding the calculation of the right child histogram by infer inferring it by subtracting the left histogram to its parent. Finally, a trick that is common to all boosted tree algorithms is the approximation of the second order of the loss function. By doing that, we simplify the representation of the loss for a group of features as a parabolic function. 
such function as a simple analytical solution for its minimum. And so we can know directly what is the best prediction to apply and what is the reduction in the loss associated with that best prediction. So if we consider the red dots versus the blue dots on the right, we would uh, figure out that the best prediction for that group is minus one, and we would see what would be the, reg the associated reduction in loss. We will then repeat that process for all of the 15 potential split points, and that will be also repeated on all of the variables. With all the, this information, we can now decide what is the best variable and its best split point. At EvoVest, we're working mainly in the R environment for both data wrangling and machine learning pipelines. So bringing the EvoTrees library into our process uh, was convenient. And the Judacal library made that super easy. As you can see, uh, this is pretty much all the code you need to bring a Julia library into an R environment and interact with them uh, the, in the same fashion as you would do at, with your other machine libraries like uh, IGBoost, uh, LightGBM, or MXNet. Another integration was in the MLJ ecosystem and in particular with the uh, newly introduced MLJ model interface. I would like to thank uh, Anthony leading that project for his help in uh, bringing uh, EvoTrees in that ecosystem. I would like also to uh, mention that uh, to me, interacting with the third party uh, library uh, has been a positive influence to refactor some of the code to have a better uh, separation of the task in terms of initialization and memory preallocation and, uh, and separate it from uh, the pure uh, growing, uh, the pure growth of the trees. That was uh, useful in order to implement both the initial fit method, but as well as the update method to continue the training. Finally, uh, a word on the future directions. There's a GPU support I would like to bring. There's already a CUDA kernel for building Instagram, but there's still several uh, work uh, remaining for the rest of the integration. Also support for category call variables. Right now, you would need to one not encode them. And finally, expand on the supported uh, loss functions. Right now, something that has been introduced is the support for Gaussian max likelihood. So having the, the uh, optimization on both the mean and the standard deviations, uh, the idea will have to expand that to other uh, uh, probabilistic distributions. So that's it uh, for today. I hope you enjoyed the talk and uh, thanks for attending.